So, the long-awaited Dance Palms Part 2 video is finally here. I am so sorry for the wait, y'all. Actually, no, I'm not sorry because I'm a grad student and I work. So I realized that in the first part, I didn't really talk about the moms. So I should have, I realized that I should have talked about the moms in accordance to their children. So I will be touching on the other mothers that I didn't touch on too much in the last part. Um, and that's Holly, Christy, and Melissa. So I mentioned them a little bit and I went into them a little bit, but I just want to go more into my opinions and my thoughts about them. So I'll be doing that at the end of the video. So the first mother-daughter trio kind of situation I want to discuss is Brooke and Paige and Kelly. So I'm going to be talking about Kelly Highland first. So Kelly is Brooke and Paige's mom and was probably the most regular non-stage mom of the show. She wanted Paige to model and Brooke to sing, but she wasn't crazy about it. Kelly wasn't the type of kid to force her kids into the spotlight. If anything, Kelly wanted her kids to have the most normal childhood as possible while also appreciating dance. But Kelly and Abby also have history as Kelly danced at Abby's studio when she was a child under Abby's mother, Marion Lorraine Miller. So Kelly has history with Abby. Kelly has known Abby since she was like an infant. They've known Kelly for a long time, but their relationship was very strained because Kelly did not like the way Abby was treating her children. And so this was a big thing throughout the show, the big arc about Maddie is seen as the better kid. And so Kelly was also part of that group of moms that could not stand that. There was also talk that Kelly stole Abby's man when they were growing up, when they were like teenagers or something like that. So some fans like to think that that's probably why Abby feels bitter towards Kelly. Did you steal her boyfriend? No. He wasn't my no, boyfriend. it wasn't her boyfriend. Sorry. She did liked you, him. Did you date him? I didn't really date him, but did you? Is because of that, and also because Kelly has like the nice husband, the, ni the nice household. Um, Kelly and her husband are now separated. But back during the show, they were living together under one roof, had a nice house, family, everything like that. So some people also like to think that Abby had something against Kelly for that. And Abby really was disappointed in Kelly because Kelly was very naturally talented at dance, but she quit dance in order to have a normal life. And that, again, just really annoyed Abby. So Kelly was definitely a mama bear and she tried her best to put her kids' mental health and well-being above dance, much to the, dis the dismay of Abby. She did not care. She wanted her kids to have a healthy environment. When a solo didn't do her girls justice, she would pull it. So if she felt like the solo was too challenging or if she felt like the solo was demeaning or if she didn't like the way Abby was treating her girls, she always pulled the solos. I just looked at Brooke laying there and I thought, you know, I have one kid with a broken foot. Another kid laying here crying because it hurts to breathe. I just had to draw the line there. I knew what I had to do. And yeah, Kelly wanted her girls to treat dance like an extracurricular and she didn't really care if they won or lost. She just wanted them to have fun. And so this is what I have to say I respect about Kelly. I respect the fact that I probably out of all the moms, she advocated for her kids normalcy the most and she really treated dance like an extracurricular. You know, like something you just do after school, not something like so insane to where it has to take over your life and take over everything you know and love. You know what I'm saying? Like Kelly really advocated for normalcy. And I'm a big, you know, person as someone who likes to cover child stars on my channel. I really feel that child's children should have the ability to just be normal, have fun, go play outside, go make mistakes, go trip, go fall, do like just do fun things. Cause I personally had I'm very grateful to say that I had a childhood of that manner where I was able to go have fun with the kids, run around, play my video games, fight with my brother, like just the normal everyday childhood stuff. And so I really like that Kelly advocated for that. So now we're gonna get into Brooke Highland. So Brooke was the eldest of the team and I personally identified with Brooke a lot because she was my age. So we were born in the same year. So I was like, ooh, someone my age. So I identified with her with that. It was probably Nia and Brooke that I identified with the most on the show. So Brooke was an incredibly talented acro dancer and she was also a contortionist. So she could do moves and bend herself in ways that nobody else on the team could. And that was seen as such an invaluable asset to Abby. And some people like to think that Abby kept trying to replace Brooke after Brooke and Paige left the show. People like to think that Abby used Kalani and other um, dancers to kind of replicate what Brooke had because Brooke's talents were so special. So Brooke used to be Abby's favorite, but as Brooke matured, she started to get less and less interested in dance. She wanted to have fun. She wanted to go to the mall. She wanted to join tier. She wanted to do things that her friends could do and have more time. She just wanted more time. I feel like I'm like dancing too much just because like I never have time to like hang out with my friends because they're always inviting me to do stuff, but I can never do it because of dance. Let's go. Brooke. What? I am leaving. And uh, Abby really didn't like that. 
And so you could tell that um, Brooke, Paige, and Kelly were really not into the fame. They were just there because they had to be. I mean, sure, they benefited from their fame, but they were never fame-hungry people. Abby always called out Brooke for not speaking for herself, but really Abby wanted Brooke to be the leader of the team because she was the oldest. But Brooke even said herself that she didn't really care to be a leader. And quite honestly, I want to just interject my thoughts with this. I don't like the idea of trying to push every single kid to be a leader. Yes, I feel like every child should have some leadership qualities or you should try to foster some sort of independence and like strength to be able to lead people. I think that's very important to have, to have leadership skills, but not everyone is born to be like the big leader and to lead everyone. Like that's not everyone's style. Some people like to just chill in the back. You know what I'm saying? Some people just like to do what they do. And, you know, so I, I mean, Brooke didn't come across as the type of kid that was very like, oh, I'm going to take you all under my wing. She didn't have that sort of personality of anything I feel like that was Kalani I feel like Kalani was kind of like more of like a natural leader plus she was older than the rest of the girls and so I feel like some kids just don't have that but I remember Chloe did say in a video with Brooke that she did with her that Chloe and the rest of the kids like they all looked up to Brooke a lot and they all tried to be like her so she was kind of a leader just because of her age so I don't like how Abby tried to force that on her but we were all obsessed with you. Yeah, no. she was the oldest one. I was I'm rearranging her. my apps. I'm like playing with my phone. I'm rearranging my apps. <laughs> and to be in like the, a special order so I knew where everything was. And Chloe is sitting there rearranging them the same way I am. I also feel like Brooke got tired of dancing with kids way younger than her. She already was uninterested in dance upon coming back to the show or upon being on the show. But then having to dance with children that are like three, four years younger than you has to be kind of annoying because it, it's a big difference when you're that young. When you're a teenager, preteen, teen, it's a big deal when you're 13 having to dance with a nine year old, a 13 year old having to dance with a seven year old. Like it's a big difference when you're that young. Brooke also said the show always depicted her as a moody teenager, however she was far from it. She was really happy and bubbly, but the show always tried to make her look like she was sad all the time. Which is, you know, classic Hollywood editing. So Brooke also mentioned that the day that Abby threw a chair at Paige was definitely a very traumatic day for her and she really doesn't like to relive that day. Obviously a terrible situation. I, seeing my sister like that, hate it, even though we... We're always bashing heads at that age, even just over stupid things. Like seeing her, I would never want to see anyone like that. And seeing her like that absolutely broke my heart. Um, and I remember that moment like it was yesterday. <laughs> So where is Brooke now? Brooke has double majored at Ohio University and got a bachelor's degree in marketing and management information systems. And she now lives in Texas. So she's kind of living a normal, you know, 23 year old life on her own working, you know, yeah, just kind of chilling and on YouTube. So I really think that Brooke definitely seems like a very strong girl and she's really well adjusted despite everything she went through, despite being slammed all the time by Abby for not being talented anymore. In five years, she might not be talented anymore. Look at Brooke! Don't say my daughter isn't talented anymore. And that's not what I just said. Just said in five no. years she might not be talented anymore. Look she at Brooke. Very she could be hard. For being boring, for being a wimp and all these other things. So, you know, props to Brooke. So let's get into Paige. So Paige was Brooke's younger sister and another talented yet underdog type dancer. And she didn't have the greatest technique, but she had a lot of energy while dancing. And me as a casual watcher of the show i don't know a whole lot about technique but i will definitely say that paige had a lot of star quality and she was very bubbly very bubbly just very happy on stage like i feel like she just exuded a natural like bubbliness and happiness and bounciness on the stage that none of the other girls really replicated as well and i feel like that was not recognized enough i feel like paige's acumen just wasn't recognized and it wasn't built on i feel like if paige had been in a more loving more nurturing environment for her dancing she could have been a much better dancer you know so abby was very rude towards paige and even threw a chair towards her all because her mom forgot to put stoppers on the chair it wasn't thrown directly at her, but I just think throwing a chair even within the vicinity of a little kid that you're trying to teach is just ridiculous. And I feel like Abby reacted, overreacted. It, like, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was just stoppers that Kelly forgot to put on the chair. Like, get another chair or just pretend like the chair is... Like, I just felt like that was so overdramatic and 
that made Paige cry. And that was actually what Paige used to sue Abby in 2014. Paige did sue Abby for emotional distress. Um, she suffered many panic attacks on the set of Dance Moms. And so she sued Abby for emotional distress, for um, anxiety and things of the sort. And the lawsuit ended up getting dismissed. And the reason why this lawsuit got dismissed is because the judge felt that if this situation was as traumatic as they claimed, why didn't they leave the studio? Why didn't they leave the show? you know, at the time. Why did they stay on for an extra year? So that was the judge's case. Um, Done. <gasps> you, Abby. You don't need him for the competition. I told you to do it for today. Why would she do that she to Paige? The you're, you're finished. Next. Who's solo? But yeah, guess what? My daughter was a wreck all freaking week. And now my kid is having attacks because she is afraid of you and afraid of what you're going to do to her. It's sad. I think it's unfortunate because Paige suffered a lot, you know? And the fact that they were filming these panic attacks, like that really irritates me. Like, why are you going to film a young child's panic attacks? However, Ma Maxi Boss did have a great video on whether the crew actually cared about the girls. So I'm going to link that video here. Again, I'm going to keep referencing Maxi Boss because she does some impeccable research on this show. Um, she really loves this show. So she give such intricate details. Um, I just feel like there should have been something put in place to give the, the cast their space. These are young kids. These are elementary school children. They should not be acting this way and they should not be exploited like this. That upset me so much. The fact that Paige was so afraid of her dance teacher that she couldn't even perform for an audition because she was so afraid of what Abby was gonna think of her. So yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on Paige. Paige Highland is now at West Virginia University and she's majoring in marketing, which is really good for her. Again, Paige seems to be very well adjusted. She has a boyfriend. She's with her friends a lot on Instagram. She seems to just be living a regular childhood and she, or not childhood, but adulthood, like young adulthood. And she seems to be extremely well adjusted despite everything she went through. I really believe that all these girls are just really, really strong people. It's like no one should have to go through the kind of scrutiny they went through, not only from the show and the producers, but then the fans as well. I can't imagine growing up in that kind of environment where it's so fixed that like one thing you say can get twisted in a whole different direction. Again, I really commend Brooke and Paige for how they handled things because after the whole incident with Kelly slapping Abby and everything like that, that was a really crazy day for them. I just feel like they adjusted really well despite all the calamity they dealt with. So I got to give props to Brooke and Paige for how they managed to just, you know, heal from it. So we're going to get into the next mother-daughter duo, and that is Jill and Kendall. Oh, Jill and Kendall. Okay, so let's talk about Jill first. So like I said before, I know Jill and Kendall aren't OGs, but I'm going to lump them in this group anyway. So basically, Jill was a great value Melissa. Like, no one can tell me different. Jill was a great value Melissa. She tried to be like Melissa. I will get into Melissa later in this video, but Jill brown-nosed all the time. She bought lavish gifts. She she literally spoiled Abby just to get Kendall ahead. She was willing to do anything. She bought a bench for Abby. She got them massages. She was willing to do anything and go along with anything in order for Kendall to reach the top. Oh my goodness. I see how presents go over well with Abby. A little something. We're going to put a little bench in front of the dance studio. We're going to spruce it up a little bit. I hope Abby appreciates it. Thank you so much. Jill loved to talk about Kendall and felt like Kendall was the best dancer on the team behind Maddie. And she would usually put down Nia and Paige as if they're not as great. And yeah, she basically thought that Kendall was the best thing that happened since sliced bread. Let's just be real. <laughs> My little Kendall. Kendall, 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 Kendall has a solo. Kendall, 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 Kendall. When can Kendall have a solo? When can Kendall be more a part of what everybody else gets a part of? Kendall, 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 Kendall's here. Even though Jill had this goody goody persona, she was feisty. You know, she was feisty. She yelled at Abby whenever she got tired of putting up her goody goody brown nosing act. She had many screaming matches with Abby and she was constantly advocating for Kendall. But I really don't like Jill. Jill was horrible to the other kids, like Brennan season six. 
I just, Jill just, I just don't like Jill. And the whole Rosa Parks thing, even if that's what the producers told you to do, I can't believe you went along with that. Like, are you kidding me? Like, you're gonna have your white child play Rosa Parks, like, when the only black kid that barely gets anything anyway, like, how the audacity, man, like, even if that was provoked by producers, are you kidding me? Like, the audacity, like, you're trying to take away a pretty much black opportunity from the only black kid in the show? Okay. Another thing I didn't like about Jill is how she handled the whole music video situation. So Kendall and video, meh. So Kendall and Nia both released music videos at the same time in season five. So Kendall did her video under Abby and Nia sought out Aubrey O'Day and other producers to do her video, which was Star in Your Own Life. Kendall's video was called Wear Em Out. So she seemed extremely jealous over the fact that Nia's video was more produced and Holly even said that she was trying to downplay Nia's success so the other women wouldn't get jealous. And this season just really, really upset me because it was just constant Holly, Nia, bam, 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 bam. Oh, Holly standing right there, bam. <laughs> Nia standing right there, bam. Like it was constantly just bam, 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 and Holly and Nia. Every chance people got to just berate them constantly. And Nia didn't really get a lot. And so it's just, Jill was just mad that Nia's video had big names behind it and she had Abby. And honestly, Kendall's video really looked um, very lazily produced. Um, the song, I will say the song was kind of catchy. It's Kendall on the track. <laughs> it was kind of catchy, but it really wasn't that high quality. And Nia's video was a lot more upscaled. And so Jill just seemed to be extremely jealous of that. And it just drove me crazy. It just drove me crazy how people try to make it seem like Holly was bragging when she wasn't. She just mentioned it like, oh, Nia's going with Aubrey to do this. Nia's going to Ar with Aubrey to do that. But she never meant it in like a bragging way. I really got upset when there was this scene in season five. And I'm remembering this off the top of my head. I'll um, add more information after filming this but basically in season five they were getting mad at holly because she posted pictures on instagram of nia's day of nia filming the, the music video and jill was like well how do you think that's gonna make my kid feel Fair, i'm is. not jealous you posted i think 18 and nia posted okay, i think 14 moms. that's fine you just wanted to put it out there for my kid to cry and see it on on what instagram. are you talking about how come this was nia's turn you can't celebrate that but first of all, Jill, first, 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 first of all. First of all, first, 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 first of yes. all. Jill, if your child's video was good, if you were proud of your daughter and what she had done, why would you care what another child is doing? Why would that make Kendall feel bad if Kendall's video was good? If you were confident in it, if you were proud of it, if you were happy with Kendall's m music video, why are you mad that another mother is posting about their child's music video? How, like that just screamed insecurity. Again, I don't know if that was provoked by producers, but it was so obvious that Jill was so insecure about that video. She was so insecure that Nia finally got a shot. It just, like I said, I don't get how Holly and Nia are friends with these women today. Yeah, it was years ago, water under a bridge, but personally for me, again, keeping my distance, I just don't get how they were able to still be cool with them after all of that. I mean, that blew my mind. You're mad that she's posting about her child. What mother doesn't post about their kid whenever they do something? What mother does not go on Facebook and post like 50 different pages of stuff they've done? What, what mother does not do that? Come on. So that just, that really irritated me. That, that made me so mad. I was like, Jill, really? Really? But okay, let's move on to Kendall. So Kendall was another young girl on the show that joined the Dance Moms cast in season two alongside Maddie, Mackenzie, Brooke, Paige, and Nia. So Kendall fit in perfectly with the other girls as she was around the same age and height as the other girls. Abby also remark remarked repeatedly on Kendall's looks and always referred to her as cute and beautiful. And Kendall was very emotional on the show along with Paige and suffered a lot of panic attacks on set. She had issues with her nerves before performing and frequently cried and showed emotion. And Nia was put in. Stop, honey. Don't stop. Well, I was telling it, everyone. I have to really commend Kendall as well because she wore her heart out on her sleeve. Like, she wasn't afraid to show Abby that she was upset. She wasn't afraid to show people that she wasn't happy. Like, she wasn't the type to hold her emotions in. She let you know. She's like, I'm upset. I'm gonna let you know. Granted, again, I don't think she always handled things the best way. I don't think she spoke to her mom in the best way. But again, she was under a very stressful, high intensity environment. So again, it's hard for a viewer just to see a kid break down on a show 
but I'm glad she never held it in. Like, I'm just glad that she didn't like let it fester and then blow up because I'm the type of person I can't let things fester. I gotta let things out at some point, and so I'm glad Kendall did that too. So let's get into Melissa Ziegler. So Melissa is Maddie and Mackenzie's mother, and she's received a ton of backlash for her passive parenting styles. This has to do with the way Melissa lets Sia share Maddie, and she also let Abby do the same thing. So go watch my Sia and Maddie's questionable relationship video if you haven't already, but that's a big thing that um, a lot of people don't like about Melissa, that she seems to be a very hands-off mother. Um, Melissa has also gotten flack from fans and the moms that she favors Maddie over Mackenzie and that she never allowed Mackenzie to be her own person. So here's my thing about that. I don't like how sometimes people like to defend Melissa because of editing. Yes, the show is very heavily edited. Yes, the show is staged, not scripted, but staged. These are very true facts. But there's just some things you just can't hide. There's just, you can't manipulate certain sentences, certain things. Like Melissa saying that she believes that Maddie should have won over Mackenzie when Mackenzie beat Maddie. Do you honestly think that Kenzie should have beat Maddie today? No. I what just, makes you, why would you say that? Because Mackenzie looked like a seven-year-old on the stage and she looked adorable and sweet. Maddie was fabulous. So Melissa was willing to do anything to get her kids ahead and she always scheduled privates, which isn't wrong, but it's the fact that a lot of the other kids could not get privates because Melissa scheduled so many for Maddie at a time. Melissa was also very secretive about these privates and it's been alleged also by Abby that Melissa used to take Maddie from school, so like from recess or lunch, take her to learn half her solo, then drive her back before anyone could notice. When you know, a mother was willing to go get their kid out of school at lunch and gym and recess and bring them to the studio, learn half the solo, sneak them back without anybody on the TV show knowing they learned half their solo. Well, no wonder they won. Which I'm just questioning, how is that even possible? Because at least when I was growing up, lunchtime was like 30 minutes. So how was she able to get Maddie, drive her all the way to the studio, get her to learn half her solo, then drive her back? Did she have like two hours of lunchtime? Like, I don't understand how that was possible. But okay. So Melissa allowed Abby to basically say and do whatever she wanted to her kids because she wanted her kids to get ahead. Melissa was an ultimate stage mom. She wanted her kids ahead. She wanted her kids to be talented. So she really didn't care what Abby said to Maddie or Mackenzie because she wanted them to be ahead. And this is where I just get annoyed with M Melissa because she allowed Abby to emotionally manipulate her daughter. She allowed Abby to also tear down her other daughter and compare her to children. Being a Ghanaian child, being an African kid, African parents like to compare you to your friends. That's a thing I went through growing up. You know, they like to compare you. And I just think it's annoying to compare kids because each kid has their talents. Each kid has their, their, their thing that works for them. And Melissa didn't really start defending Mackenzie until season six, which is when they were literally out the door. Like this was just a few episodes before they were leaving the show is when Melissa started to defend Mackenzie. So... I just think it's sad that she allowed an older woman to berate her children the way she did. So the last kid that we're gonna get onto for this part is Mackenzie Ziegler. So Mackenzie was the younger sister of Maddie Ziegler and she was also an acro dancer. So Abby really pigeon held Mackenzie as this baby, as this little cutesy girl, always had Mackenzie in cute dances, pigtails, cute costumes, cute music, tricks, 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 tricks. And a lot of people in the dance world say that tricks only take you so far. She was almost always compared to her older sister, Maddie, and it seems like Abby didn't want to let Mackenzie have her own identity at all. This was especially obvious when Mackenzie did Maddie's old solo cry. Show me the Maddie face. Has to be like... I don't know, you're, they all look the same. They all look like Mackenzie, Mackenzie, Mackenzie. When Maddie dances, she's a breath of fresh air. You're like the stuff we spray in the bathroom. There's a difference. Her own mother, again, really didn't seem to do much to mitigate this. Kenzie then branched out of her dancer thing by becoming a singer and becoming Max Z. There's a lot of drama surrounding the whole Max Z situation. So it's a lot of drama surrounding them. And my thing is, Kenzie was never allowed to show emotion. Every time she protested or cried, she was shut down by her mother and Abby, like the improv dance. Spiders. But don't she yell. laughed at me because I wasn't doing anything because I don't know what to do. How do you have the number one video in the country on iTunes and that you can't pretend there's a bug? You 
come in there? And you show her what you're I'm capable crying. of. It's ridiculous. Okay. Mom, I'm a kid. I'm See how Mackenzie was like, Mom, I'm a kid. I'm allowed to cry. And then Melissa's like, stop crying. And then Holly was like, you show her what you're made of. See, it's good that Mackenzie had people like Holly around to encourage her. It seems like this treatment still affects Mackenzie to this day because she made a comment on her TikTok saying that she looks ugly next to Maddie, which is so sad to me because Maddie and Mackenzie look alike. I remember the first time I watched the show, the very first time I remember my first impression, I watched it in season three. I looked at Chloe and Christy and I was like, they're definitely mother and daughter. I looked at Maddie and Mackenzie and I was like, they look just alike, which is so funny because they really don't look that alike. But when I first started watching the show, I was like, they look just alike and they really do look similar. They have a lot of similar features like their teeth, their cheeks, everything. They look very similar. And so I think that's so sad that she feels that way. And my other thing too is that Maddie is not that much older than Mackenzie. They're, they act they act like Maddie is like five years older, eight years older than Mackenzie and is literally this like star like above Mackenzie. I'm like, no, they were literally a year and nine months apart. Maddie was born September 30, 2002 and Mackenzie was born in June 2004. I don't remember the exact date, but they're not even that far apart in age. And I just feel like they just emphasize the whole older sister, little sister thing too much. I'm like, these kids are like in the same age group. Is it that deep? Lastly, I will say about Maddie and Mackenzie, I really like their relationship. I really like how Maddie really took Mackenzie under her wing and she never did it in like a condescending way. Like, oh, I'm your big sister. I'm better than you. She did it in a very nurturing, loving way. I feel like even when you look at their photos, the way they speak about each other, Maddie is very protective of Mackenzie. Maddie, you can tell that Maddie is literally like her energy. It's just the way, even just the way I don't know if I'm reaching too hard, but just the body language is just like, stay away from my sister. I'm protecting her. Like, I just feel like her body language is very guarded of Mackenzie and Mackenzie looks up to Maddie a lot. And so I really like that dynamic that the show did not ruin their relationship. Cause judging by what Melissa allowed and what Abby did, I feel like any sister would feel resentment towards each other because of the way they were treated. But they really grew out of that. They really grew past that. They really matured over that. And I'm so happy they're with their close friends because they need each other. You know, they both went through this experience together as a family. And so they need to stick together. They need each other. So my camera life. cut yeah. out, but I basically just wanted to give my final opinions on Holly and Christy. So I really liked Holly. I loved how level headed she was and that she was the voice of reason and that she never really cursed. Um, some people feel like Holly came off as a know it all at times, but I don't really see that. I think she was just trying to show people that she's not an idiot or whatever. You know, um, I can definitely see at times where Holly may have overreacted or times where I didn't like things that she said but for the most part I think she was definitely the most sensible and Christy was your stage mom mama bear and she protected Chloe some people like her some people hate her I personally don't mind her I just like that she was there for her child at the end of the day I can't fault her for that so yeah those are basically my opinions for this part I thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you guys soon all right peace